Yes, you can make $200 every day while living in your RV, but if you can make it past our four second intro, you'll find out how. <laughs> <laughs> Susan just told me. I'm trying to figure out the lights right. Susan said, go on the other side. But we're looking at ourselves <laughs> on screen over here. We, we got the screen. I'm like, okay, what? I just cut off a 12 hour shift, okay? Like, I what? look a hot mess. This is not my color. Yeah. It doesn't bring out my eyes. It doesn't so make your eyes pop. Yeah. If your eyes pop on this color, you got issues. Or, or that color. No, but she's telling me to go on the other side. I'm like, why? I could because we're trying to see if the lighting is right, which it's not. Oh, okay. Anyway, we could see ourselves. Let's be serious. So, okay. <laughs> Gotta be serious. So, if you watch us in our last video, we showed you how we were able to stay in Colorado all summer last year, and if you want to go back and watch that video, we'll put it in the description below. But so that uh, job was from May through September and once that job was over with then we had another job that we were going to go do which was gate guarding and we left from Colorado and we went down south uh, through New Mexico and then we were er, we were originally going to go to somewhere in Texas but they changed us at the last minute since we were already in Carlsbad they said well we've got a gate there for you to go to and we decided yes we'll go there so we ended up doing some gate guarding in New Mexico. So basically gate guarding is where you work in the oil fields guarding the gates to make and you are the security to make sure who's coming in is supposed to be there and whenever they leave you have to log them out. So what we want to do is since we've worked for two different companies doing gate guarding we want to kind of do a comparison for you to let you know the ins and outs and tips and tricks you questions you might have um, and if you really are wanting to do this how you might actually go about getting a job. There are some things that you don't know that you don't know, <laughs> if that makes sense. So there's some things that we didn't know about that, you know, the questions to ask before you take this position, because you're a 1099 contractor, you're your own boss, basically, you can accept it or not if they, you know, if they assign you to a gate that you don't like. But if you're a newbie, if you're a newbie like Shane said, they know that you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, and they <laughs> will probably take advantage of that. Yeah because there are some gates that people just don't want to mess with. Um, like the one that we were at in Carlsbad, uh, there was a gate that we had to open and physically close. And, you know, it may not seem like that big of a deal, but it's, if we'd have been parked, if our RV would have been parked right next to the gate. the gate, which we told them we wanted a gate that does that, but they changed it and I was like Susan said, we we're supposed to go to West Texas and then they, since we're already in Carlsbad, they said, hey, we have a, a gate open in Carlsbad. And I told Susan, I said, I bet that's a gate that somebody don't want or somebody's leaving. Obviously, they were leaving, so we were replacing them. But um, there's probably something about it that maybe they have trouble filling it. And since we were newbies, they decided, hey, we'll just put them there, which I think that's probably what happened because talking to the other couple of people that we talked to out there, they kind of said the same thing. Uh, they were kind of disappointed, too. They felt like they were misled a little bit. Um, but it's all about you knowing what to ask, you know. So... That's the first thing I would say is, if you're going to do this, tell them you want a gate that you don't have to open and physically close. I mean, unless you're okay with that. Unless you're okay with it. But <laughs> if you do get that gate, you should ask for more money. These jobs pay anywhere from $175 a day. For, and I'm talking about a 24-hour gate, which is all we do because we're a couple. But they do have positions for 12-hour gates. For single people. They'll have a little guard check there for you, but you have to drive there, work there, and then go home. They probably work daylight hours or whatever, but... So what, what we're talking about are 24-hour gates 24. where uh, RV couples come and stay on the property to actually guard the gate. So we take 12-hour shifts. And we don't know what the other ones pay, the 12-hour gates, because we haven't had any. We don't want those. So the 24-7 gates will pay anywhere from 175 to, I've heard, up to 300 But the three A day. We do know that you can make two to 250 a day but sometimes it may depend on the amount of traffic that the, comes through the gate, whether you will actually get paid more money. Because the one, the job we're at now, if we get over 400 in a 24 hour period, a 400 count of traffic in a 24 hour period, they will pay us an extra $100 for that day. So we would make $300 a day on that day. 
but that's that's counting traffic in and out so if it's a if it's 200 vehicles in it's 200 vehicles out that equals 400 mm -hmm. so it's not as bad as what it sounds um, but all you're doing is you're basically just logging people in and out on a tablet um, some places uh, I hear some companies have paper we actually logs. have to write them we've never worked for a company we have to write people in you know uh, write it in on a on a piece of paper we actually both both companies that we've worked for they use, uh, tablets. they use tablets that you just enter the, the license plate number and, and pull you know. it up. And most of the time they already have been in the system before and it pops mm -hmm. right up, everything populates. Everything populates, yeah. And then you just, uh, you know, just log them in and out. Now the last company we worked for in Carlsbad though, not only did you have to log the people in on the tablet, you had to take a, you physically had to take a picture of the front and the back of the vehicle. And yeah, what's in the back of the vehicle, like the pickup truck. You had to I think they were having problems with people stealing. Maybe stealing stuff from the actual job site. So you may not be there just to keep log people in and out. You may also be there to mm -hmm. keep the workers honest because you know, like you can imagine, they they could probably get a really expensive piece of equipment or tool in the back of a pickup truck, and you know, sneak out of there with it and go sell it somewhere or whatever. Yeah. You know, so. It's. It, I could see them. I could see them wanting to take pictures. Uh, but the, we don't the place, have to do that here. No, the place right now we just look, search for their uh, tag number, log them in, log them out. It's pretty yeah. simple. It takes. Uh, well, you'll see. I have uh, a clip that I'll show where I show myself how long it takes. It's yeah. just you know no more than thirty seconds. Yeah, it doesn't take that long. And a lot of people, you know, I've heard some people say, well, $200 a day sounds good, but you're working 24 hours. You are, you're on the clock for 24 hours, but you're not working you're the just, full 24 hours. You're just responsible to be here. Somebody has to be here for 24 hours. The other person that's not working their 12 hour shift or however you dice up your time, we do 12 and 12 here. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, the other person could go and leave if they want to go to town or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, while the, while the one person is working their 12-hour shift, the other person has 12 hours off, so they can use that to sleep, you know, to clean, well, to do whatever, to go run errands in town, wherever. Of course, where we are here, we're quite a ways yeah. from town. But in Carlsbad, we were not just, even a mile from town. Yeah, right? so from, that was really easy. A town with 30,000 people. But out here in West Texas, you know, we are, we are way out here. I mean, it's, uh, we're a town near a town called Carrizo Springs. We're actually 11 miles from the Mexican border as the crow flies. You can't get there from here, that kind of a scenario, but... Yeah, there's no road the, leading. Yeah. It's This is a big giant ranch. Yeah. Uh, so there's no road leading straight to the border. Uh, there's a lot of sort of desert-like terrain between here and there, a lot of cactus and stuff, so... And some cool wildlife. We'll yeah. show you some pictures. We've seen some road runners, and uh, today we saw a bison. But I know that people could say, you know, one of the, the potential downfalls you might think would be, like here in South Texas, is some people don't want to work close to the border for because they're afraid of, you know, illegal immigrants and stuff like that. Um, and I get that. But out here, there are so many people out here, um, it'd be hard to for them to get uh -oh. by. <laughs> He's got to go log somebody in. So if you heard that little beep... The da da da. We have some sensors that we put at the front gate and a sensor a little ways down the road around a curve. So when people come in and out, it, the, the sensor lets us know that somebody's coming in. It, for the front gate here, we can see people coming, so we don't necessarily have to have that chime. But on the other end, when they're coming back out of um, out to the gate here, we can't see them. So whenever they pass that sensor, it chimes a different sound than it does when they're coming in. So it helps us know we can get out there in time uh, to log them in or uh, to log them out as they're leaving. So um, I know some people may be concerned about being close to the border and that may be one of those things where you can tell um, the company you're working for, you know, you don't want uh, a property that borders Mexico. Because you're in control of what gates, yeah, where you go. Yeah, they. And trust me, these companies need people like us because think about it, they, they have a lot of oil, uh, mm -hmm. oil drilling sites out here. Yeah. Every one of them probably need guards at them. And so they have to have people with, usually with self-contained living quarters like an RV. So their selection of people that they can have coming out here is pretty slim. Plus you have to go and get your licensing, which we'll talk about here in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have a special uh, 
uh, uh, security guard license. It's a, called a class two license. But the one I, we have is for the state of Texas. Yeah, for Texas. I'm not sure about other states because there are drilling rigs in Colorado. We know of that. We know they're in New Mexico because we work there. And there are some in Louisiana. And I don't there know where. There may be some in Oklahoma. There may be some in Oklahoma. There may be some in, I don't know, maybe in Wyoming and different places. I'm not really sure. But um, but there are a lot of different places to have them. And here in Texas, we have to have um, a Class two security license. Um, but I know it's probably concerning because when people watch the news, all you hear about is uh, people, you know, the, bo the, border. the border stuff. But, you know, and there, there could be some legitimate concerns. But um, Now, we've been here for four, a week today. A week, yeah. A week today. But I've talked to other people out here, and they said that, uh, you know, the people, the, actually our boss, well, one of the managers at the company we work for, um, Juan, he said that he's been out doing this for a long time, and he said one time there was a... Uh, a guy that was out here and he was begging for water because he'd been lost in a desert and he was about to dehydrate and die. So he he called border patrol. He called border patrol and they yeah. come and helped him out or whatever. But so and and plus out here there are so many drilling rigs and so many people, so much traffic that between us and the 11 miles, as I'm pointing behind the camera there, there that's Mexico straight that way. Um, I don't see how any but they, the people that are going to illegally coming to America, they're not going to want to come through a property that has, you know... Especially this property, because the property we're on, we know, has at least 10 gates here. So they probably have yeah. at least 10 guards. 10 we guards. know there's three four... We know three other uh, guards that are on other gates here on this one property. And also 24-7 traffic out here. Mm -hmm. So it'd be risky to try to come anywhere out here. Plus there's Border Patrol right outside the property. So I went into town... And there, I saw two or maybe three Border Patrol vehicles just staged up, sitting in different places. So, so they do patrol around out here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus, I'm sure they probably patrol by plane every so often in helicopter and stuff like that. And at night, we have really big uh, floodlights Huge. that really light up the place. So well, you'll if, see there's, that. if you'll the border crossers are going to come, they're not going to want people to see them. So yeah. they may cross over at night, but they're not going to get close to you probably because they don't want you to see. Yeah. They don't want to be, they don't want to be seen. You know, they're doing something that they don't want to get caught. So, um, but it's not a problem apparently. I mean, uh, at least not here. It's not. So I, for us, that was really not a big factor because I'm not scared, first of all, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, that's the only, if I would say negative, that, that could be considered a negative for some people. Yeah. But like I said earlier, you know, if you get, if you can be very specific when you want to, when you call up one of these gate guarding companies, you tell them, you know, I want this, 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 and this, or I don't want this, or I, you have to be very specific with them to let them know what you are willing to do. And so if you're not willing to work this close to the border, just go ahead and tell them that and they can put you at another gate yeah, where so. you, that would be better for you. I wouldn't give them too many demands either when yeah, you're first starting out. Because if you go, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this, yeah. I don't want this. They're like, well, we don't have anything for you then. And you may yeah. not get to work anywhere. Um, so like he said earlier, the first uh, gate guarding job we had was in Carlsbad, New Mexico. And we told them that we wanted to work directly from our RV. And uh, they said that was fine. But we didn't end up working right from the RV and you know initially they had us working and one they were going to put us at a, a, a gate in Texas and then they changed it to a different gate in Texas and then by the time we got to Carlsbad they said oh well we have a gate open in Carlsbad do you want to go there and we said well sure so in all that mix mix around you know we, they put us at a gate where we had to physically open and close um, the gate, which wouldn't have been that bad had we been able to sit right next to the yeah, gate in well, our RV. We could have just walked in and out of the RV. But at that particular location, we were about, what, well, 60 yards? We'll show you the video, but yeah. it's a 50 or 60 yards, so there's no way you can, you couldn't just sit in your RV. One of us had to be outside. And then the other negative thing to that was they were supposed to have had a guard shack for us because we couldn't physically work straight out of the RV. But all they had, so you had to be you had to be up there right at the gate. But you'll see in the clips coming up that we just had a tarp tent, and yeah, that wasn't good because the wind was really blowing a couple of times out there, and I mean it gets pretty hard. 50, oh, 60 mile yeah. hour wind sometimes just out of nowhere. You have to be you have to be willing to work in the in the in the, the elements in the because. Elements. 
here and there, you're going to work with wind, you're going to work with rain, you're going to work with snow, you know, and... But, but, you know, if you have a gate like we have now, it's not a big deal because you walk right inside your RV and if you have an awning, you can be underneath your awning and be out of the elements. But in that particular one in Carlsbad, we weren't. The wind was way we too were. much. I mean, one night at 2 a.m., I uh, wish we had video footage of it. I was so mad, though. I was sleeping. It was my time to, it was, you know, it was my time to be off and I was really tired. And Susan come woke me up and said, the tent was blowing, you know, that's blowing away. And she wasn't lying. It, the whole thing came out of the ground. It was well, staked in the ground really well. And it ripped the whole thing out of the ground and blew it across the car and scratched the car all up. And I wasn't very happy about that. <laughs> well, at 2 a.m. getting woke yeah. up. But just the whole scenario. We, we should have had a guard shack out there. And We were there for, we took that job and we were there for 48 consecutive days. Don't which do that. <laughs> I would not recommend not doing that one. on your first job. You know, just get used to it because we had a lot of time to fill before we went home for the holidays. And so yeah. that's why we decided, well, we'll just go down here and do this, you know. We want to rake in some good money, too. Yeah. <clears throat> but at the first time, I would say go a couple of weeks, two or three weeks. Three weeks max, or maybe yeah. two weeks max on your first gig. And then. That's just our recommendation. You can do what you want to do. Yeah. But I'm just telling just you. Just that it, way you can get used to it and know the ins and outs and get better, you know, acquainted with what you might want to ask for your next job or what you want the d changes you want to make for your next job on this job we're only here for three weeks yeah we yeah we're just here three weeks and the last one what do you say 48 days uh, yeah we were there for 48 consecutive days and on that one since we couldn't work directly from the rv it made it seem like it was way longer to me it did but also we weren't doing 12 hour shifts because under this it wasn't even a tent it was basically a tarp on some um covered over some metal piping it was just like a yeah really cheap tarp tent it yeah. was weird and so i mean it was fine when the weather was nice during the day or you know it was fine to sit out there but at night it was cold there were some nights it got down to like 25 and you don't yeah. want to just sit in a a tarp when it's 25 degrees so we would sit in our car um yeah, and then you try to get in and out of a car a bunch like a or if a truck would have been easier for me yeah. i'm so tall <clears throat> but getting in and out of a car yeah over and over and over and over and over and then uh, it was just, it was pretty taxing. It was a lot. Yeah, for 48 uh, days. And the day we left there, they actually brought us a guard shack. The day we left. <laughs> the day we left. And we, and I was like, wow. But, I mean, thinking, you know, that's just our luck. I mean, it would have been a totally different experience if we would have had yeah. a way to work in a, you know, a shack with a heated, heated and cooled. Yeah. At, you know, it would have been a totally different experience. But anyway. That, but we decided to still do it again this time right here. And so far, we are sitting directly right at the gate so we can just walk in and out the rv and we don't have to you know, walk 60 yards up the yeah to sit at a gate you know in a tent so it, our circumstances have, are better here but we just want to give you um you know some things to ask yeah. so if you, you know you, one thing you need to tell them is what you're willing to work for how many days and ha yeah, yeah 20, what you're willing to work 12 for 12 or 24 hours which one of those yeah and how um, many yeah how much you want to make per day Yes. I mean, they're not going to pay you $300 when you're first starting out. Probably not. Unless you find a gate that has a high, high traffic load, and then they probably will. If it's a fracking site, they may yeah. pay more for those because those are really busy sites, I do believe. Yeah, right now it's a drilling site here. Both of ours have been drilling sites where they're setting up a drilling rig and they're drilling down into the ground for mm -hmm. oil, getting to the to reserve down there, wherever it's at. And then uh, the fracking is, I guess, I don't understand really how it all works, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of traffic. So I guess, I don't know if they have yeah. to pump liquids in the ground or do something. I don't know how it all works, but there's a lot of traffic. I've heard it to be hundreds of people like lined up, like bumper yeah. to bumper. And so you if you work, if, if you want to do a, a busy, a busy gate, you might ask for a fracking site because they may pay more. We haven't done that. We don't know. And as far as finding where to find, uh, looking where to find these jobs, uh, I know you can go on like workcamper.com. Um, that is a paid site, uh, but you get a 30-day free trial. So, And they list a lot of jobs on there for full-time RVers. I recommend that site. Uh, but don't they you, They can go directly to uh, Timekeepers. Yeah, there's Timekeepers. That's who we're working for right now is Timekeepers. TK or Timekeepers. Yeah, we're on some other thing here. Yeah. T but the other one, another company we work for is Guard One. That was the one we worked for the first time. Guard One, I think, is the biggest one, uh, the biggest company. But, and I, I don't know if the companies themselves are good or bad. You'll hear good and bad reviews of all the companies out there. Really, you will. But, I mean, the people that, 
Yeah, the people that we talk to on the phone, the ladies in the office at, at both places have been very helpful, yeah. very nice. Super nice. Super, yeah. yeah. They, they want you to have a good experience because they need you. They need you to come back and they love repeat uh, guards because, yeah. oh, and when you get your guard license, uh, at least for Texas here, it's uh, for two years. So you have you to gotta, update it every two you years. You got to do a little test online. And it's fairly easy. Yeah, you have to take a test. Uh, and then you have to score a certain percentage. Which is not hard. It's not that difficult. But you have to take a little test, and then you have to uh, go and get, well, you have to have, get a background check, and then you have to go get your fingerprints. Yeah. Uh, and you have to take a drug test. Now, some companies don't require the drug test, but some yeah. do. Um, At least the, for the The first one the did for us, but the second one us. didn't. But they all yeah. say they will, so anyway. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, basically in a nutshell, that's how it all that's you know how the whole gate guarding thing works. And if you're not in an area where you can go, like when we signed up for the first gate guarding company with Guard One, we were not in Texas near their headquarters, so we did everything online. They sent all of the paperwork yep. that we needed to fill out online, so it was all done very easily online. There was it was pretty easy. And if we had any questions, we could uh, call them and talk to them or email them, you know. And they were Maria was the one that we spoke with at Guard One, and she was very. Uh, helpful she answered all of our questions and she called us back if we had if we had to leave a voicemail so that you know she was very easy to work with we, we were pleased with that yeah so anyway we got some footage here uh, we're going to show you uh, that we've shot around here and you can kind of get an idea you can see some of the wildlife that we saw um, we'll show you some footage from Carlsbad and yeah we have footage from Carlsbad too. and from here the Carlsbad's footage is from back in what, what month was that September that was September and October of 2022 yeah so this footage here uh, footage out here you're gonna see uh, it is obviously current so we're here right now oh something else to be very uh, to think about is what time of year you want to do this gate guarding because if yeah. you do this in the summer in southern Ooh. and south Texas you better have some good air conditioning because this is April, the beginning of April this week, and we've already had two days. It was over 100 degrees. But those were near record temperatures. Yes. They said that was really hot for this time of year. Yeah. It's probably normally about anywhere from 75 to 85 this time yeah. of year down here. But, you know, this is South Texas. It can get hot at any at any time. So just keep that in mind. If you're going to do this, they may pay better if you do it through the summer, too. I, I don't know. I think they might because they're desperate to get people in the summertime. <laughs> so... Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it's it's a good way to make some quick money, you know, if you want to come down here and do this. And like we said, I know it's that you think it's well, that's what you got to work 24 hours a day, but you're not. You're only working 12. But even in those 12 hours, we can sit in here and watch TV. I can read a book. I've been doing, you know, word search puzzles and plus, plus you whatever. Have, plus you have free utilities. I mean, oh, that's right. So yeah. you got generator running out here, which is fairly quiet, actually. Actually, this is really a lot, quiet. Yeah, it's actually really quiet. A generator with 50 amps. Uh, so I mean, it, you it, have water, water and sewer hookup, sewer hook up, everything you need, and they come pick up your trash for you. Yeah. <laughs> so that is, you're just here, you're making money, yeah. And you know, it's the ultimate boondocking, I guess you could say, because you're getting paid to. Well, just, it's a hookup, so it I know, wouldn't but, be. Well, sort of boondocking. <laughs> it's work docking. Is this work docking? <laughs> work docking. We come up with a new one. Oil docking. <laughs> I don't know. Guard docking. Well, another thing I forgot to mention is, you know, whenever you're ready to come down and actually getting ready to go work, you'll go to a, uh, they have, all these companies have staging lots, like an RV. It's not an RV park. Well, sometimes they'll pay for you to go to an RV park if they don't have one nearby, like out in Carlsbad. I guess they didn't have any uh, staging lots out there because their headquarters is in Houston. And we were way over in Carlsbad, so they just they paid. actually paid for us to stay in our RV park it's, for four or five days yeah. before our job started. Yeah, it was a nice, pretty nice RV park. Yeah. But a lot of them will have their own properties, like the one we're at now. We they have a little staging lot, like a piece of their property it has uh, a couple of RV hookups. So if you come down, just be you know that's something that you can keep in mind is you'll be on site. Sometimes you may be there for a day. Sometimes it may be a week. But before they get a job before they for get you. you on a gate but you still get free they still pay for all your hookups because mm -hmm. they're paying for all that yeah just to have you on standby so that's another sort of an advantage i would say is you just kind of be aware that you can be there and have free rent so to speak <laughs> until you get ready to go to work and if you're in the vicinity of the company you're going to go to work for, you can go to their office and actually fill out all the paperwork there, which is what we did here when we started working for Timekeepers. We were already coming down here 
to Southern Texas where their office was anyway. So we just went to the office and filled out the paperwork, whereas when we worked for the other company, we weren't near them, so we did everything online. So, but, you know, if you have any questions about any of this that we didn't cover, you know, leave us a comment, leave the question down below, and we will be, we'll do our best to try to get you the answers quickly. We do read all of the comments, and we answer all the comments, reply to them. Um, and then, uh, if you like our video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. And in our next video, well, I don't know why we're doing our next video. I don't know. Have we told them from the last video where we're going? Oh, we told you. Yeah. Should we tell them now or should we tell them the next video? We can tell them now. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Do you wanna? Stay we, tuned. You already said it now. Now we got to say it. Oh, I want. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> She's trying to lure you in. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. We're going to New Hampshire. Yeah. To the Northeast. We've never been in that part of the country. To the any of the New England states. That's where we're headed for this summer, or for summer in 2023. Yeah, we like to follow the cool weather, the coolest weather we can in the summer, yeah. and head south in the winter if we can. So. So you gotta subscribe if you haven't already, so you can stick around and see our crazy our, life, our that shenanigans. We, our shenanigans that we go to when we hit go up to New Hampshire. But we do really, really appreciate you watching this video. Like we said, give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe to the channel, and leave us a comment. Yeah, comment with any questions, because the comments actually help, too. Mm -hmm. um, but and it's a free way you can help us out. Yeah. Everybody likes free. Free. Was, what? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> At this point, <laughs> she's, been, I, <laughs> she's been working for a long time. I'm delirious. <laughs> I've been, uh, I just got to work 12-hour shifts. Okay. Okay. Well, Compose we do, myself. Yeah, back to normal. <laughs> okay we're, we're gonna close this out and we do appreciate you watching and until next time live in the sunshine Not exactly the kind of wildlife you'd expect to see in South Texas. Well, we got one leaving. We got one leaving as we got one coming in. Yeah, but the, the ones that are leaving, what's going to where they're going, and I think they're all lost. So, I don't know. I don't know what to tell them. The, the numbers change out here. They're, they match. They change. They're different. They're slightly different. I don't get it. So, they'll figure it out. Yeah, it gets really, really dusty out here when the trucks go by. When they turn, they grind the dirt. Do what? When the trucks turn in here, they grind it up. They grind it up. Because it comes from two different directions, so it's like powder. Yeah, it's it's... Yeah, it's, it's like, really like flour. dusty. Yeah, it's like flour. That's a good. That's a good uh, analogy. So this is the gate where everyone enters, and then here we're sitting here. We can just come out anytime somebody comes in or out the gate. We just come out the door, and then there they have our generator that has the lights on it that we turn on at night time. And then there used to be a guard shack here. Someone would only be here for 12 hours. So that's why there's a porta potty here. I hope you can still hear me over the generator, although the generator is not that loud. Um, but over here behind the RV, this is where our sewer and water hookup is. We just really have to watch out for rattlesnakes here. And we have a, several road runners that are running around, so hopefully they'll keep the snakes away from us. But this is the road that they drive down. You can see the little tower down there.
fuel tank. 